the last seven years of my life I've been working on the Ryan. And the I first was involved with the the land landing. Initially we wanted to land on land and to reuse the capsules five times. So we're trying to simulate the dry lake beds out in California. Now, there, this is interesting. There's a dragonfly that will come here. If you watch it. <laughs> Our requirements when we were landing in the desert originally were to impact something the size of a Mustang horse, a mammal. Then it got reduced down to coyote. When we send that forward, they highlighted the dragonfly and said, now we're down to a dragonfly. <laughs> so you might, this is a 2,500 pound end cap of a pressure vessel. And you notice the camera's shaking? There's four feet of dirt, 2,500 pounds, and the camera's 200 feet away, and it shakes the camera, so the whole ground shakes. So actually, we took that, end cap, that pressure vessel end cap and actually added what then looked more like a, a Orion capsule. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you get about 60 Gs, because we're simulating the velocity under parachute. For a land landing, the nominal landing was to land flat, okay, and 25 feet a second if you had the chutes. For water landing, you'll see later they tilted 28 degrees, and now I think the design is to go 34 degrees to try to reduce the weight and eliminate some of the um, some of the uh, astronauts. They have a, a Three, impact attenuation two, system. One, so you see, we start out with vertical tests. A vertical test will happen just if there's no wind. You'll just come down straight. And the, the ones that have horizontal velocities are due to the wind actually moving, moving the vehicle. So there you can see a sequence of how we swing. And again, this is a vertical. We had initially two vendors that were building airbags. And you notice there's a, it, that it bounces. There's actually a bag inside that doesn't fit. That was called the anti-bottoming bag. It was put in there for reusability in the desert as they scraped along because the way this concept worked, at a thousand feet you'd jettison the heat shield and deploy the airbag so you'd come down 25 feet a second, 40 seconds, 15 seconds you could inflate and 25 seconds you were, you were going down with the airbags. So we did a second generation airbag, this again when we were doing land landing, and uh, now we have a boilerplate test article that looks more like like an Orion capsule. Now this is realistic in the sense that it's 16 and a half foot diameter. It weighs about 16,000 pounds. There's 3,200 pounds of lead that's placed in the front to move the center of gravity about eight and a half inches forward and an inch and a half to our right. This is the most exciting test we did in the whole series. And we did deviation from the perfect landing being flat. We did 10 degree toe in, 10 degree heel in test. This is 10 degree toe in. We secretly hoped that we'd flip the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hurt the boilerplate. All the instrumentation is kind of recessed so that if we do flip it, you know, it doesn't do any damage to any of our accelerometers. We just had to have to flip it back, which would cause some kind of delays, but uh, uh, basically, each one of these airbags is controlled individually, and there's a small pyrotechnic cutter. I'll show one that we tried to cut a cable that's too, but it's like a Vectran cable. We send a signal that actually cuts open the closure cord. So as I mentioned, the astronauts, this is a model of like Apollo, but the astronauts have, our astronauts are seated on a pallet, and in the pallet, there are energy absorbers. So what we're doing is trying to generate a deceleration pulse. We're using paper honeycomb, just the common packaging material, and measuring the accelerations. And so we can calculate what stack of honeycomb to generate different, different pulses. For example, this one's going to generate maybe an 18G pulse. The green part you see actually represents when Orion was a 6 degree. And we have this tilted at 28 degrees to get the effect. We could tilt it, it's like a hamster cage, we could tilt it at any angle we wanted. Hmm. So another situation occurs, it's called a pad abort, or in a ascent abort. There's a chance, even after NASA decided to do a nominal la water landing, there's a, maybe a 2% chance that you'll get blown back and land into sand. So we're trying to represent Kennedy sand the packing density and the moisture content, and we're dropping first our half scale, 
Well, in fact, that's all we did was the half scale. But these are pure vertical and they're drop tower. Then you see a swing test we did a couple years ago, four years ago. And you can see the nominal is 25 feet a second. The horizontal would be the winds, and then it's usually at a 28 degree angle. So this is actually, it's, the sand does a pretty good job at dissipating the energy. And you can see from this front view, it's really nice. This is the view I like right here with the sand. No, <laughs> beautiful cool. in slow motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. So be because uh, NASA had, had elected to do a water return to Earth for water landing, we built a hydro impact basin. So let me show you, we did a series of demonstration tests. This is our first pool. It's not too big. <laughs> <laughs> and what we were doing is actually oh my God. developing our procedures because this was different than other testing. So we actually have a swimming platform. <laughs> <laughs> you killed it. I started it. out honestly with an X. It wasn't too dramatic. And I put water balloons down there and I asked my wife, I said, Go get me a pool at Toys R Us. <laughs> And this was the only one she said they had in oh stock with all, you know, it was too perfect. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so the hydro impact basin, the pool is actually not built under the gantry. We actually have to throw the test article in there. So we develop most of our horizontal velocity from the swing and most of our vertical from the fall. Mm -hmm. So this is just a stop action view of the, the construction of the hydro impact basin. There is a crane pad. Some engineering folks required us to design the crane pad to lift the capsule full of water, like 72,000 pounds. So there's four foot beams down there. They couldn't go but so deep because of the structure. There's structure under the gantry that tie the legs together or the different A-frames together. So this is the most exciting test we did in the whole series. Now this boilerplate is the same test article that they'll use for the recovery ops testing, which you'll see later. So that's quite a splash. That's the name of our project, Splash. And what we want to do is we want to hit at this end of the pool so that we can arrest the test article. Now in this case, the test article, you want it to land in stable one, to float in stable one. But it actually inverts and floats in stable two which they'd have uprighting. So here's just a shot from the gantry. Again, we want to hit here. It comes, goes underwater, slides out, and then we have to arrest it to keep it from hitting. It isn't so important here because this is just a metallic, but when we get to actual Orion vehicles, they don't want any scrapes or scratches from ground handling or you know, going into the side of the pole. So here's one riding along the top from the... And the way we actually separate is from the swinging platform, we have three or four of these explosive bolts. Now these bolts will hold 100,000 pounds each normally, but we, at the right time, we fire a charge that separates the bolts, and you know, we hit in the water, ideally, at the right time. Now you'll notice there was some black muck that came up. Uh, our analysts were predicting we would come within one foot of the bottom. We had, you know, 20 foot deep, and we actually, actually came really close. We did not get any scrapes from the bottom, but we came close enough to scare up the bottom. Well, Richard Teddy donated a NASCAR <laughs> over the years, had a design for a soft wall. So actually, we wanted to hit here, we just have a small pulley. All the facilities that do car crashes have like a hook that will